Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm actually an ex Chabonera student. I graduated from this school when it was still in Altos de Chabon. So I feel very excited to be here because it feels like I've come full circle. And actually, we used to tease my fellow students and I that one day we were going to be the ones on this stage. I was thinking, doing what? Painting? You know, what, what are we going to do? We're not singers. And yet, I had this feeling that one day we would. So here I am. And I can start telling a little bit about myself. Um, I am a Dominican-born, uh, Swedish, uh, Dominican, American female artist, illustrator, designer, doodle book author, textile designers, the, 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 the list kind of goes on. Obviously, I'm a very curious person. I love to experiment. So what makes my story part of this, you know, TED Talk? It's about women and the changing face of art. And obviously, I'm a woman, but guess what? That was actually the word that I had the most issues with as I was studying art and deciding how I was going to end up, what field I was really going to concentrate on. It seemed that the word female woman was a hindrance. People would warn me, oh, you better choose design because art is really difficult for women. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I know myself. I'm going to beat this. And I would even say to myself or to my friends, well, then I wish I hadn't been born a female because I'm going to make it. I'm very headstrong. I'm very stubborn. But for an artist, that might be a very good thing. We need to be tough in this world. There's a lot of critique. There's art critics. There's a lot of subjectivity in art. So basically, you never know what you're going to get. You try, and then you hope for the best. And basically for me, it was trying, 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 and hoping, and hoping, and hoping. So I'll start this talk a little bit with some statistics. So you see kind of what I was up against. So basically, children start with a crayon at the table, everybody equal, boys and girls, everybody drawing, everyone's creative, yay. They get to a point where some of them decide, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Equal numbers, boys and girls. And then, you know, you go to art school, and then it sort of starts changing around a little bit. And women actually go ahead of the boys a little bit. There are, is a higher number of women that graduate from the arts, get their master's, and actually earn a scholarship. It's 75% compared to boys. I say boys, I mean men. We're at that stage. Um, that number later plummets when these women decide what I want to do is art as in be represented by a gallery. The number that I'm talking about is 14%, actually lower, 13.7%. I'm being generous. And then in the auction market, it's even less, 2%. 2% of women are represented in the auction market and half of them are deceased. So we're talking a very small number of living female artists that actually are in the auction, let's call it the art market today. So my story begins with a little bit of the same thing. I grabbed a crayon when I was little and discovered, man, this is the most fun thing in the world. I can do anything. I can create any character that I want. And basically what I started doing was exactly that, creating tons of characters. I would draw my friends, I would draw myself, I would draw myself in fantasy situations that I didn't find myself in reality. And I had so much fun. I decided I wanted to do this and had the support of everyone around me, my parents, my community. You're going to do great. You're going to be this amazing artist. And then I started hearing some little warnings. You're going to be an amazing artist, but you may not be able to, you know, pay the bills. So you, you should find something else to fall back on. And I thought, there is no way. I, if I'm going to do something, I don't like to just try it. I want to get good at it. I want to own it. This is mine. And I knew that if everyone was telling me that this was going to be a challenge, that was going to be what I was going to choose. It, that's the way it works with me. I'm very happy that I chose that. But in the beginning, it was really hard. I graduated from Parsons. First, I came here to Chabon, which I already told you, but I got the scholarship, 75%. I was up there. 
and I got the scholarship to go to Parsons. In Parsons, I did really well. Graduation night, and I got snatched up by the industry and was hired by an animation studio to design characters. I mean, I was living the life. I was so happy. But at the same time, I was thinking in the back of my hands, my head, I want to paint, I want to draw, I want to be represented by a gallery. I'm sure in no small part because people told me that that was going to be the most difficult thing. So I started showing my work and galleries immediately, if they even took a look at it, were like, no, we're not really doing this kind of art. You know, it's a little bit strange for us. And I was thinking, how strange? I'm making characters. It was very character driven. A lot of my male peers were doing character driven art. They had no problem or less. Some of them were showing. And I thought, well, maybe I need to get better. So I start painting, drawing. I just start practicing. I, I throw myself completely in it. And I start hearing other things like, well, maybe if you sex them up a little, like erotica, but hardcore. If you, if you paint a woman naked, but like spread her legs. I was like, oh my God, seriously? This is what I need to do? Art collectors would tell me, if you do this, Maybe I'll, I'll buy your piece. I like your style. I like what I'm seeing. It just needs to be sexual. And I talked to my male friends and they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not getting that advice. And I was very frustrated. I felt violated. So I go back and I throw myself into my paintings and I'm thinking, I gotta trust my gut. There's something about this that doesn't feel right. And I started making it more female driven because that's what I was feeling. And it started taking the shape of female characters in different situations. The fun part about this is that in the Dominican Republic, people started liking this work. And I started getting shows here, different galleries, and ended up working with a particular one, which I still am working with today. And I still was hearing, well, it's still a little bit too female. Like, you, maybe you need to change it to, I kept hearing that, maybe you need to change. Maybe you should do a landscape. Maybe you should paint cars. Maybe you should paint guns. And I was like, what is this? You know, this is what I'm feeling. And there's already tons of guns. There's already tons of aircraft carriers out there. I don't think there's enough of real female um, situations being painted, feelings. So this goes back. Actually, I had my own Me Too moment when I was younger and repressed those feelings as we are taught to do when we are girls. Continue, march on. During that time, I started hearing that word, Me Too movement. And it was like a light bulb going off. And I thought, wow, I think I belong to this. I think I'm part of this. I keep getting, I, do, I don't feel represented. I feel very alienated from other women because I basically, all my friends were guy friends. They were boys because I think probably to make sure that I got opportunities the same as they did. I don't regret that, of course, because I have great male friends. But with the Me Too movement and the realization that I was actually sort of responding to a global event and a, a sisterhood of sorts, that made me feel like I had purpose and drive. And I said, I'm going to continue doing this. I don't care. I'm going to go there. Still heard some comments on it's still too female, you should change it. And I finally cracked and I said, oh yeah, you think it's too female? I'm gonna give you female. And then these, this was born. I blew up the faces, I removed all superficial things about life that might distract you and all I wanted you to see was how I felt, how women felt what we were going through. It's like, you're gonna see it and it's gonna be really big and you cannot look away. So basically, surprise, maybe not, but by then I had probably put in my 10,000 hours that they say one needs to put in to have a little bit of success, but this really started happening. I started getting some exhibitions and in um, New York and different places and I really actually felt connected with these expressions. At that time, something else happened, which was really interesting. He doesn't even know this effect he had on me, but there was a creator, executive producer of a very popular show on Showtime. He had bought one of my paintings, and he told me, Tanya, I can't wait to see more. Tell me when you're having an exhibition. And I said, well, I'm not sure, because I keep getting asked to change this. And he said, are you crazy? Do you know what this is? This is exactly the response 
to what's going on globally, do you know that you are in the exact right place at the right time? And I thought, okay, that's it. That's all I needed. I've got my, you know, I, I have this um, affirmation from someone in the industry. He's male and he's supporting me. And I finally felt happy. And I started really concentrating on this. And even though maybe my story might change and my paintings might change, right now, this is the most authentic self, which I think is the most important thing that an artist can do is continue to be authentic and listen to their own voice. So my paintings, even though this is from 2015, are sort of continuing this story. So what is it, why? Why is there this issue with female artists? Throughout history, we've always participated in the art movements, we've always been there. Even in the Renaissance, there were schools for women, and many of them actually became known. One of them, Artemisa Gentileschi, she became known as a feminist painter even then, not only because of her amazing art, but because, well, she was raped by her tutor, her art tutor. She took him to trial, lost, not a big surprise, but it changed the way that she painted and it turned into like her ven vengeance art. Many people don't like to call it that because we focus too much on that. But it was definitely a female point of view. And like her, tons of women would, who actually painted who probably did not sign their names because it wasn't really proper for a woman to be uh, exhibiting. And I do not doubt that tons of paintings in the museums around the world that are anonymous are probably from women. Hopefully, I think so. So, where are we now in this time and, and, and place? We are following the history of art, this time including women little and little more, right? Little by little. In the um, German Expressionism, abstract expressionism, male artists started admitting that they were being influenced by the women artists in these groups. And the movement actually changed because women were being very daring and po sort of posting on their paintings their feelings. Men were not doing that so much. They started doing that when they saw that their female peers were doing that. And these women were, you know, pardon the, the word, but they were badass. They were wearing the pants, they were smoking, they were showing their work, they were getting criti critical acclaim. And yet, we hardly ever hear about them in the storybooks or in art history. We never read their names. So, fast forward a little bit to today and you wonder, well, how is it any different? My statistics were actually pre-pandemic. So, some things have changed and the pandemic is one, one part of it. The Me Too movement really created this global need to address the underrepresented, in this case, women. But together with the women, there was also the LGBTQ movement and the Black Lives Matter. And together, they created this sort of support system and a very, very loud voice about artists not being represented. That was part of it. The internet obviously accelerated the process of being heard. You criticize museums, galleries, institutions for not showing enough female art or black art or gay art, and the whole world reads about it. And then they start saying, why not? We want to see this. I want to see some, I want to see stuff that I haven't seen before. So this has accelerated that process, which probably we all heard about the protests in the 50s, 60s, 70s, but now it's actually happening more globally and quicker. The women nowadays are much wealthier. There's a very big increase of millionaires and billionaires that are women, especially in the Asian market. They want to buy art and they want to see females. They want to collect female art. And probably one of the most important um, points is the younger generation. I'm one of the ones that I'm like, you know, thank you. Thank you, young generation. You guys are amazing they have a much broader and inclusive view. They are ready for change, they want to see change. Many of them are becoming collectors, many of them are starting galleries. I've had the immense pleasure of working with some of these young collectors and gallerists and the, the difference is amazing, it's a breath of fresh air. So you say, aha, so I'm working with them, how did that happen? COVID, uh, don't ask me why or how, 
we were all at home, I was painting, then I probably did put in those 10,000 hours. But definitely, these young collectors and these young entrepreneurs were researching artists, and somehow they found me, and they found a lot of women artists. I have to say, I have never seen so many female artists in group shows and having solo shows. If you have a solo show, that means that the gallery is banking on you selling. That's a huge shift. There were not that many solo shows with women. Retrospectives. Every museum, I mean, and if you're not having a retrospective on a woman artist, you're going to get criticized. It's, I can see it every day. You still, you still have 2% female artists, what's going on? Look in your basement, we know they're there. So it's a little bit of a collective mentality, a collective curiosity. So we're thinking, well, okay, so we've got now all this stuff happening, but has the art itself changed? We have a lot of very varied art. It's always sort of been there. Let's say contemporary art is part of the characteristic. But yes, I think that there is a change. It, aside from sort of the protest art that, that usually is there, there is a softer art. There is a lot of portraiture. It's coming back. And it is a little bit of like artists saying, this is my friend. This is, this is how I live. This is me. I'm a little bit obese. I'm picking a snack from the fridge. This is my daily life, and I'm a woman. Or a gay couple having an intimate moment, not necessarily sex, just intimate moment. So it's sort of the dignity of the mundane. I saw some paintings that really blew me away. It was a female artist painting some male black friends of hers. She's a black female artist. And the roles were sort of reversed. The men are all covering themselves. But there is this beautiful dignity to these paintings, and that's exactly what she wanted to show, the dignity of the male black person. So basically, I can say that to close this, this little talk, that I feel very optimistic. I feel hopeful. I'm feeling the change. I live the change. I hope that it continues, not because there's curiosity for listening to artists or watching artists, and of course I include film and I include music, but there is, it's, it's a responsibility. If we don't see everyone's point of view, we're only getting half the picture, not even half the picture. And if you think about art as the thermometer of humanity, you can actually, if you're curious about what humanity was feeling at a certain time in history, take a look at the art, take a look at the art movement in that time. And this art time that we are in is extremely interesting. And it's, it has room for everyone. So I would love to see it continue. I hope I'm living it. And I'm, I've never been prouder, by the way, of being a female artist. Thank God. That's what I am. And so I'll finish this by saying, if you are a creator or you feel like you want to explore that, but you maybe were sort of pushed away from this table before. It's a very good time right now to grab your crayon, get back to the table, and tell your story. Thank you. <laughs>